Next, we need to draw three rectangles. Let's first learn how to draw rectangles and circles on a blank drawing area. Drawing shapes is similar to drawing a bounding box with our Select tool. Let's click on the Rectangle tool. Move the rectangle cursor to the drawing area. Click and hold the mouse button, drag the mouse, and the rectangle starts to form. Once the rectangle is the desired size, we can release the mouse button. Let's do this again, except this time, we will hold the Shift key. Click the mouse button, start to drag the mouse, and a square, since all the sides are proportional, starts to form. Release the mouse, and we have a perfect square. Let's do this again one more time, and hold down the control key. And the center of the rectangle forms from the point where we started the rectangle. Keep in mind that while we are creating the shapes visually, we can also set the values in Design Central along with other rectangle options. For instance, let's say we needed to draw a 5 inch wide by a 3 inch high rectangle. Let's draw a simple rectangle. Enter the value of 5 for the width in Design Central, and enter the value of 3 for the height. Now we would take our rectangle tool and click on the drawing area, and it creates a 3 by 5 inch rectangle automatically without having to draw it. What you'll find is that the oval shape is created using the same method. Select the oval tool, click and hold your mouse button, and the oval starts to form. Once the oval is the desired size, release the mouse button. If the shift key is held while drawing the oval, it will form a perfect circle. And if the control key is held while drawing the oval, it will form from the center. For right now, let's return to our drawing. Recall that as part of our design, three rectangles have to be drawn. They also have to be set to the height of the three lines of text. To help with this, two guides can be placed on the top and bottom of the three lines of text to provide the height of the rectangles. We need to move the first one and place it at the bottom of our objects. The second guide we will place at the top. Let's select the pan tool and pan the drawing over a little. Let's take the rectangle tool and make our rectangles. We'll draw the first rectangle by moving the tool to the drawing area, hover it over the top guide, and the crosshair will appear showing that we're going to snap to the guide. We'll click and hold the mouse button to start our rectangle, drag the mouse, and our rectangle starts to form. Once the rectangle cursor is over to the bottom guide where the crosshair appears, release the mouse button. Notice that once the rectangle is formed, these two grab handles allow for size adjustments to be made. Now we have our first rectangle. The height and width values have been set and designed central to the rectangle size we just created. We can click once in the drawing area to create the same size rectangle. Click one more time to create the third and final rectangle. Now we have two other rectangles with the exact same height as the first one. This makes it easy for us to adjust its width without having to worry about its height. The gap distance doesn't have to be perfect right now. We'll use another tool to adjust it perfectly in a moment. Next, we need to adjust the width of the second and third rectangles. With our Select tool, we'll draw a bounding box encircling the second and third rectangles. Once they are both selected, we can take the right grab handle and adjust both of them at the same time so that they are slightly smaller than the first rectangle. Finally, let's click outside to deselect them, click on the third rectangle, click and hold the side handle and make it a little thinner than the second rectangle. Now that they are aligned, let's move them closer to the text, selecting all three rectangles, and then using the arrow keys, move them a little closer to the lettering. Let's space them out evenly to make sure the gaps in between them are both at the same distance. 
We can click on the Arrange pull-down menu once again, Spacing, and notice in the Design Central, it shows what distance we can set it to. This will display a preview of how it will look in the drawing area. It looks good, so we can click on the green check button in Design Central, or press Enter, and the rectangles are spaced evenly. Let's go back and adjust our text so that it has a slight slant, making it italicized. Many fonts, such as Arial, already have an italicized version of the font. In this case, though, we want just a minimal slant to our text. If we were to simply italicize a font, it may not give us the slant we need. Therefore, let's click on our Select tool, draw a bounding box around the three words, selecting all the text objects. Go to our Design Central, click on the Text tab with the capital A, and adjust this value, Slant, to 10 degrees. Now our last step to finish the design is to draw a border with rounded corners surrounding our sign. Before we draw the rectangle, let's click the Rectangle tool and look at the Design Central. When we make the border, we want it to have unique corners. Design Central allows us to have four different types of corners. Clicking on this side arrow next to Rounded will reveal these. Regular makes the corners square. Inverted corners make the corners have inverted rounded corners, and clipped. In this design, we are going to rounded corners. Right below this is the inner border checkbox. When enabled, this will automatically draw an inner border to the rectangle that's being drawn. Let's enable that by clicking on it and setting the thickness to 0.25. Now we can draw the rectangle using the margin border as a guide. The border is a little tight, so we can either expand the border or make the sign a little smaller. Since we want to keep within our margins, we'll go ahead and reduce the size of the sign. We'll choose the Select tool, hold down the Control key so that it only selects those objects completely within the bounding border, and expand the bounding border so that it completely surrounds the sign, just missing the sign border, and release the mouse. It seems that the height is good, but the sides need to be brought in. Looking at Production Manager, the size is currently at around 21 and a half inches, give or take. Set it so that it'll scale everything from the center by clicking the center point here, and then reduce the width to an even 21 inches. And there we have the final sign. We have completed our sign. That's the end of this lesson. In our next lesson, we will be cutting this sign and going over some of the options available to us within Production Manager.